it feels like the company has absolutely exploded in the past few years in terms of popularity, um, and that would match uh, pretty closely the growth that the company has enjoyed. And I feel like the first time I saw Yeti Cooler was on someone's fishing boat a couple years ago, um, and at that point it was still kind of a, uh, something new and novel. Um, and I actually got to check out the company's single brick and mortar location when I was in Austin this past March, and I was thinking to myself, like, holy cow! I didn't realize that they were at the point where they're opening uh, physical stores. Um, didn't realize until doing the research for the show that there was their single location. But we'll get more uh, into that later. But at this point, you see the Letty, Yet, the Yeti logo on a pretty regular basis, even living in an area like DC. And I was rummaging through my brother's kitchen looking for something uh, last week, and boom, right there, I see a Yeti water bottle in the cabinet that belonged to my sister-in-law. So they really. Is growing its presence. Um, this is a very interesting consumer business, and it the growth I think is especially impressive, given how focused its product portfolio is. Um, so Roy and Ryan Siders founded the company in 2006 in Austin, Texas, and this started as a pretty niche cooler company marketed to avid hunters and anglers. Um, it's grown into a much bigger company since then, and a big driver of that was Yeti's takeover by Cortex. So this is a private equity firm. They took it over in 2012, and we've seen firsthand how Cortex has taken the Yeti brand and expanded the product line from those core coolers to other uh, accessories, um, cups, tumblers, water bottles, uh, soft coolers, and most importantly, they've also brought in the target market for these products to everyday users. So, in the prospectus, Yeti shares some interesting data from customer studies that highlight this strategic change. So, first, from 2015 to 2018, the customer base shifted from 69% hunters to just 38%. And in that same period, women grew from 9% to 34% of the, co the company's customer base. So, under Cortec, Yeti went from a company with $90 million in, of revenue in 2013 to $640 million in 2017. On the surface, you know that's 60% plus compound in your growth. That's crazy for any company, let alone a consumer one, churning out coolers and tumblers. Um, but there are some also gray areas working through Yeti's recent results that we'll get to. Um, I'll pass the baton to you, Asit. Can you walk us through any key numbers that have stood out to you and um, anything with profitability and other kind of longer term prospects? What do you, where do you want to start? I uh, want to just walk back briefly uh, to one more comment about Cortec uh, making this into a more um, viable operation for a larger scale business. Uh, they also brought in more seasoned management. So the two Cedar brothers are still uh, with the company. Um, Roy Cedars owns 10%, Ryan Cedars owns 9%. And after this IPO, Cortex still retains a majority, 52% of shares. But they brought in a CEO, Matt Ranges, and more important to me, a new CFO uh, this year, Paul Corbon. So, those of you who are familiar with Dunkin' Donuts, he was their CFO and left to uh, join this company. So, leaving a great outfit like Dunkin', which itself is growing and coming to this, tells you something maybe of the opportunity. Uh, well, let's dive into some uh, top line numbers and talk through those. And then I think that'll frame a lot more of this discussion for us. We have from their prospectus uh, the first six months of uh, net sales. So this is about $342 million uh, worth of sales. On that, uh, the company has a gross profit of $158 million. All the way down to the net income line, net income is 15.5 million. So, just rough numbers. Net profitability is about five percent, and this is a function of the product line that uh, this company sells. Uh, we were talking uh, before the show about one of the phrases in the prospectus, which mentions that Yeti goes. Uh, has a product line from a $20 tumbler all the way up to its top of the line $1,300 Yeti cooler. So when you have such a wide variety of price points, um, listeners, you can sort of build in your head. You can sell more of those high end products and up the margin, or you can sell the lower end products, which hurts your margin but helps that revenue growth. And in fact, as we'll talk about later in the show, drinkware products are really leading uh, sales for the company over the last year. So basically, for me, uh, one more point to mention about the financial statements I talked about $15.5 million in net income. Interest expense on the company's debt is 
um, 19.6 million. So even more than final net income. We'll return to that thought. Um, and Vince, I was curious. Uh, we've talked uh, a lot about distribution strategies um, on other IPOs we've covered, and I noticed that um, Yeti has a very interesting one that's split up between a direct channel and a wholesale channel, which involves a lot of major retailers. And I sort of wanted to talk about that, uh, maybe uh, following these numbers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of you know the way Yeti split up, it's, it's splits up its product categories and its distribution. You know that coolers category um, that I think they're most famous for in terms of the product line. It made up forty five percent of the top line in the first half of twenty eighteen, and then the drinkware. Um, uh, some of the lower price products that you mentioned, Asset, uh, those came in at fifty two percent of revenue, and they are growing. Uh, that product category is growing quite a bit faster than. The coolers line, um, and the company distributes its products through wholesale and direct to consumer channels, with about a 70-30 split, respectively, between the two. So for wholesale, um, Yeti's biggest partners include chains like Dick Sporting Goods, um, Bass Pro Shops, REI, and then also about 4,800 smaller independent retailers. And then for the direct to consumer part of the business. So these include Yeti's own online stores. Um, they also sell through Amazon and that uh, flagship uh, store location that they have in Texas. And again, this is an instance where direct to consumer, and we see this for a lot of uh, consumer and retail companies, uh, that DTC business is growing faster than wholesale, 75% year over year in the first half of 2018. And the tailwind uh, for that growth and for the company is that there are higher profit margins uh, for DTC that they enjoy over wholesale.